Hey everybody, come on in. How's everybody doing today? Hey, hey Paula, you were wondering where I was? I know, it's a little bit later today. Tuesdays are a little bit different, so I don't start till two. You're in there, Lynette. Hi, 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 come on in. Thank you, thank you for my haircut compliments. Uh, welcome to the scope, Maggie. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Good to see you. Jen, hi, hi, hi. Good, I'm glad you guys are in here. Uh, super important topic today. One of the most important ones, I think, honestly, that I've covered in a long time. Uh, hi, Lena. Um, you know, no offense, but everybody, all of y'all are awesome, but I care about your kids so much more. It's the kids that we're going to change a generation with. So we're going to talk about this. Okay. We're going to talk about this. Uh, Georgia. Yes. Share this one like crazy. So swipe, swipe. You can share this scope if you're new to Periscope. Uh, tap in the screen over here, like gives hearts just because it's like, hey, I like this or I like that comment or whatever. That's what that's all about. Um, the colors you don't have control of, it just gives you one. Um, if you're new to this, if you're new to my Periscopes at all, first off, thank you for getting on here. If you're brand new to my Periscopes and you've never been on my Periscope before, put a number one in your comment box. Um, so number one, because I want to see who you are so I can uh, say hi. Um, and I appreciate you guys getting on. I appreciate you taking time out of your lunch. Thank you, Jess, for getting on. Uh, Caitlin Rice. I think it's Caitlin. I think I'd say that right. Uh, thank you all for getting on here. Um, awesome. Oils, Russ. Appreciate you. Um, if you're on replay, this is a live a video that I'm doing with a good friends of mine on Periscope. So don't freak out. Hi, Kayla. Thank you for getting on. Smilesy, thank you for getting on here. Um, don't freak out when I'm talking to random people on Periscope. Okay, so this is live uh, and interactive, but on the replay viewers, thank you so much for watching. All of my videos go on, on YouTube afterwards, so you can check them out there. Uh, you can go to the website, you can go to family-wellness.com and look at that. That's where I post um, a lot of blogs and different stuff on there and other research and resources are for you on there, but you can get to the YouTube channel and the office Facebook page. Uh, I put all the videos on YouTube, and so here's the YouTube handle. It's just my name, uh, but you can also go to the Office Facebook page when you get on there, um, and <laughs> you want me to use them as an example, Michelle? Uh, we can totally do that. Um, you can go to the Office Facebook page, and I post other videos on there as well, all right? Um, okay, so disclaimer before we get started, because today we're talking about hormone imbalance and problems in kids and teens, um, because you thought... You thought that your hormone imbalance is a 33-year-old female or your hormone imbalance is a 58-year-old female or a 62-year-old man. You thought that your hormone problem started when you was an adult. And that ain't true. That is not the truth, okay? Um, the hormone imbalances and stuff that we are dealing with as an adult or as adults, uh, as a culture, uh, starts in kids. It actually starts before that, and I'm going to take you through it. It starts before the kids are ever even here. So we're going to go through the process on this, how the toxicity happens, how things get out of balance. Today, we're not going to talk about support yet. I'll talk about supporting um, hormones in kids next scope because we got to keep these separated. Um, and so today, um, I am not covering your specific things. Like We are going to talk about conditions. But I'm not going to go, oh, yeah, that condition, oh, this is what you do. I can't do that. And so if you ask a question like that that's non-compliant for me to talk about on Periscope and I ignore you, I'm not being rude. I, I'm, I am totally – Batavia, Joe from Batavia. I got it right today. Um, I'm not being rude. I just can't cover it like that. I will, I'm more than happy to do phone consults for you. I do those all the time, every single day. Um, and so, um, you know, please call me on that. I can do that for you, but on here I have to, you know, just go over general. Um, you know what, Melissa, let's talk about that because hereditary stuff does play in. So remind me later to talk about um, genetics as a part of it. Okay, so again, like I was saying earlier, one of the things I think we get trapped in as a culture and we get trapped in as adults is we think that our problem is an adult problem. Like the problems we deal with with diet, the problems we deal with with emotions, the problems we deal with in hormones, and weight and all of these things. 
All of these problems, okay, are because of an adult issue. And, and we get stuck in this rut and we get stuck in this lie and this deception. And that is not true. All of the problems that develop as adults were started or at least initiated in children. And so you have to go back and you have to go, okay, and I go back and trace even adults in here, I'm like, okay, what happened way back when? When did you start getting this exposure? When did you start getting all these issues? When did you start having problems in your system or stress in your life or whatever it is that started to throw your body off from normal? Because I've talked to you guys that are my regulars on here a lot about this. I'm going to keep saying it to you until you understand it, until you own this. The Father created your body for perfect. He created your body. He created our organs and all that stuff to work well, not to be out of balance, not to have estrogen dominance, uh, not to have Hashimoto's, not to have Cushing's disease, not to have type 1 diabetes, not to have type, type, type 2 diabetes at 8 years old. Like none of those things. He did not create your body to be sick. He created your body to be well. Now, sickness and disease and conditions like that will happen because of a body that is not taken care of either intentionally or unintentionally. So second thing, this is not a scope to throw blame on parents at all. Hear me on this. I have five kids. I am not casting blame. This is a struggle. It's something to learn from. If you have kids that are struggling with hormone imbalance and there's things going on, then you learn more so you can do better and you do more. And then we work with getting their system balanced out. There's no judgment on this. Okay. None of that. Um, we're literally just talking about ways to really assist the next generation in keeping the hormones really balanced and helping them be as healthy as possible. Because don't you want your kids to be better than you? Like I do. If you don't, then you probably shouldn't be an parent. Like, sorry, that's going to sting some of you guys. But if you don't want your kids to be better than you and you're not hoping that your kids achieve more than you've achieved, then you're probably missing the boat as a parent. Like, there's a phrase that Cindy and I say all the time, and there's something that we, that we throw out there, and we say we want our ceiling, yes, our ceiling to be their floor. We want them to launch off of us in health in the spiritual realm, uh, in the physical, in business. We want the things that they to do, like we want our ending point to be a starting point for them. And this, none of that is more important than health. Because if we give them the money, we give them the business savvy, we give them you know, whatever else it is, and we don't lead them in health, we have failed them. We have failed them and we need to help them get it back. Or we need to be intentional about teaching the next generation to do it better. Does that make sense? So that's the whole goal and vision for this. And so I just want to say that as a caveat because I, I know that it's hard as you get more and more information. You, you take it on yourself like it's a, your fault a lot of times, especially dealing with kids. So all the moms on here, raise your right hand and you say, I will not judge myself and I will give myself grace with all of the information that Jim Bob kicks out. Okay? You have to say this. You have to raise your right hand right now. And you're, I can see you. I see you're not raising your hand. Raise your right hand. Yes. And you say, I am going to give myself grace. I will not judge myself. Give myself grace, okay? Because there's grace for that. All right, so here's the current problems. And I want you guys to understand how big the problem is. Grace is the name of the game here. Yeah, you weren't raising your hand. I know you weren't. I saw you. Uh, you solemnly sworn. That's right, Misty. Um, so... Here are some of the problems that you have to understand the severity of to understand why we need to change it. Because I think that, you know, as a culture, uh, childhood obesity, you know, and things like that, like we've kind of been like, and I'm going to give you several others, but that's just the first one on my list. Like, oh, well, it's, it, they're just a little overweight. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal because it really messes up their hormones. So there's, there's things that are important that I feel like we just kind of go, oh, they're fine. They're just kids. That is not true. It is not a, oh, they're just kids because the things that they are struggling with now at two, three, four, five years old, the things that they're struggling with will set up their hormone either balance or imbalance through their teen years and into young adulthood and will affect their fertility. So the things that they're going through right now are hugely important. So yes, you want me to drop a mic on that, Sarah? Bam. It's hugely important. It's more important than you could ever imagine and ever fathom because we're building the hormone system now, like today, every day. So here's some of the current problems, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna let you get kind of a picture of this. This isn't even, this is a short list, okay? Like, okay, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, of a disclaimer. I get really upset about this because I love kids so much. 
kids are my jam. Like, I like adults, but you know what? Like, I rarely, I prefer your kids. Like, don't be offended. I prefer the kids because I love kids, and I love being able to change their world and change their life and really teaching them and educating them. I just love them, okay? And so when you, when you talk about this stuff, I get upset when things, when people don't take care of their kids or they don't really press in and don't learn more about how to help their kids or uh, that this stuff is happening. I get sick and tired. I get upset that, they, that, that, that this is happening to our kids because we have a culture that's just uneducated and a system that is messed up and a, a global government system that is really like creating a problem with our kids and it's messing up an entire lifestyle for them. Okay, so I'm passionate about them being better and I'm passionate about them understanding health and all of us learning more because as the parents learn more, as we learn more, then we can lead our kids better. As we learn more, we can give them better food options, we can give them better environments, we can do those things. And if we don't, we're selfish. We're selfish jerks. Bam! That's it. If we don't, we're selfish jerks. That's it. And so if you don't, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to take care of this stuff, then you're a selfish jerk. And I would be too. And so you need to check yourself uh, on that, okay? Uh, and go figure out what that is in you that, that doesn't want to fix it, okay? So that's an issue. All right, here we go. Let's talk about the short, short list. Childhood obesity. Childhood obesity is an epidemic. Oh my gosh, it's an epidemic. Um, you know, the kids that we see in here, we don't see as many anymore, but we had, a, we had a few years in there where we were seeing quite a few kids that were, you know, two, three, and four years old, morbidly obese, like really obese kids. Um, and there's, there's issues that happen with that, which I'll talk about in just a second. Accelerated sexual development in young girls. Accelerated sexual development, young girls hitting puberty way earlier than they should. Uh, I'm going to shock you with some of the stats. I'm going to shock you with the ages of girls that I've worked with in here that have started their cycles and started their menstrual period. Uh, you'll think that I'm lying, and I'm not. Um, it's crazy, and it's sad, and scary. Stunted development in boys. We're going to talk about this. Uh, because um, things that will accelerate um, development in girls will at the same time stunt development in boys many of the times. Cushing syndrome, problems with the adrenal glands, hyper and hypothyroid, growth hormone issues, whether it's giantism or dwarfism or retardation of, uh, of growth hormone or whatever. There's so many different things. Okay, so here's a great question. What's a normal age for a girl to start her cycle? Normal age is 12 to 13. That's a normal age right in there, about 11 to 14. So the average age right now, they say, in America uh, is around 10 to 12, okay? Uh, sometimes they develop breast tissue, yes. Like sometimes they can develop breast tissue in boys. That's a part of uh, childhood obesity because of, because of a certain hormone imbalance. We'll talk about it. But, um, you know, in girls, like the normal uh, age range uh, for them to cross into puberty is around 13 years old. Okay, that's, that's pretty typical, should be more healthy, normal, usually, all right? Um, there are a lot of girls that are starting into puberty before the age of 10, a lot. There is a huge run of girls, um, hundreds of girls, uh, that are starting the age, starting puberty before the age of 10, uh, six, seven, eight years old, okay? Uh, the youngest that we have seen, and I'm going to explain why in a minute, the youngest girl that we have seen start her menstrual cycle in the office that has come in here that Cindy and I have worked with ourselves, the youngest girl we have ever seen in the office, are you ready for this? I'm going to go ahead and grab a mic just so I have something to hold on to because this one makes me mad every time. Um, yeah, there you go. Adrian, see? So here we go. You ready? The youngest we have ever helped in the office, two years old. Two years old, already having menstrual bleeding and breast uh, tissue development uh, at two years old. She was two years old when she started. Yes. Um, and so at the time, uh, this little girl had come in and the mom was like, the mom goes, you know, I, I feel like, um, I feel like she's, um, you know, like having like different like sexual development. And I was like, so she brought her in and she already needed a bra, like a training bra at two years old. And um, I was like, something is wrong. And so I went, okay. And she was like, yeah, and she's having um, bleeding and stuff. And I was like, what? So I walk out and I was like, surely I am like being crazy on this. Surely I'm missing something. I'm not normally wrong on the nutrition side. It's just what I do. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm completely off. So I walked out. I went and got Cindy. Uh, Cindy was working in the office at the time full time. I went and got her. I said, I'm not going to tell you what's in room two. I want you to go in there. It's so-and-so and their family. I want you to go in there. 
check so-and-so, the little girl, and tell me what you think. Cindy is very left brain. She's not like not emotional. She's very linear. She's very, she was becoming overweight, Melissa. Yes. She was overweight at the time for her age. Yes. She was getting that way. And we're talking about why that's a problem. Cindy walks in the room. She's very green, red personality. So she walks in the room, sticks her head in, says hi to him, walks right back out, comes to me and she goes, she's starting her menstrual cycle. I'm like, yes. So we sent her to a pediatrician uh, just to have another eye on it. I called her office. Uh, and I said, hey, I said, um, <clears throat> I'm sending you a patient. And I said, I'm hoping that we're wrong on this and that we're way off base, but we think that she's starting her menstrual cycle at two years old. Tell me I'm crazy. And the office manager at this office, they work right down from us um, about 10 miles from our office. Um, uh, she was a well-known pediatrician at the time. She's since retired. Um, she goes, um, oh, two years old, that's not ridiculous. We see three, four, and five-year-olds year in here all the time. Come on, people. So that's a problem, okay? Now, <clears throat> the reason that childhood obesity plays into this and why that is a problem is because of estrogen, okay? These girls going into puberty early, these girls starting their cycle before the age of 10, which you shouldn't. <clears throat> if you did, then your hormones are out of balance. It's just the way it was. But two, three, and four years old, man, we're that's wrecking their life forever. Uh, so that's like totally a... Short, slim chance of fixing that. But um, with them, here's what they did for it. I said, okay, well, if you're going to fix it, um, if we're going to fix it, here's the things you need to support. Here's the things you need to do, blah, 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 blah. Amber, that's closer to a norm, more normal age, okay? It's still a little early, but still norm, more normal age. So, you know, we were talking, I said, you know, here's the things you need to do. I said, or part of it was nutritional, part of it was uh, was passed on to her. And I'm going to explain this. Um or I was like, you're going to have to go to the medical route, and the medical route of this is not not pretty. Well, the dad didn't want, was embarrassed with the way she looked, and the father, I don't even want to get started on that. He was like, I don't want to do any of the natural stuff. We want to go the medical route, which is totally their choice. It's fine. I respect them for that, whatever they want to do. But so what they ended up doing is at two years old, they started this little girl on Depo-Provera injections, uh, birth control injections at two years old to shut down this cycle. Uh, and they told her that she would be on Depo-Provera injections every three to six months uh, until she was 18 years old. And then at 18 years old, they would just stop the injections and she could go carry on her normal fertility cycle and be able to have kids and all that, which is impossible. There's no way. Okay. They're just setting up for failure, hopefully not setting her up for cancer, but the probability is very high. Uh, and it's just ridiculous. Okay. So that was the medical route because it's really all they've got. Like if they're, if you medically go in and there's imbalance in kids, they have to shut it down. And so they're going to do birth control early on. It is sad. It's heartbreaking and infuriating at the same time. Okay. Um, so there was two problems that happened in her situation. And this is a thing that happens with girls that start into puberty early. A lot of times, two problems with her at that age, one nutrition, bad nutrition. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about diet stuff. Uh, that added to part of a problem. I'm going to bring this up second. Uh, the second was the mom's problem during pregnancy. Okay. So keep those two things in your head, diet and mom's pregnancy. Both of those, as we go through, I'm going to use her as an example. We're going to come back to that and I'm going to highlight that as we go through. Okay. Now that same thing that would accelerate her into her, her menstrual cycle as a girl would stunt or would depress or would retard or would slow down sexual development in a boy, okay? Because the hormones, when you look at the estrogen hormone, if you increase estrogens in the body, that will activate and start puberty early for a girl, but it will retard and slow down puberty for a boy. Y'all see how this happens? So estrogen works opposite and boys need testosterone to start their cycle, to start their, their, their puberty uh, in, you know, period of time. Girls need the estrogen. Well, with childhood obesity, childhood obesity is a sign of high estrogen. It's a sign of estrogen dominance, and it's a sign of dietary changes and hormone imbalance and problems in that child that are increasing estrogen in their body. Now, once they are already in a state of childhood obesity, and they're, they're in the obesity stage, 
then that those fat cells will create and will build more estrogen on its own. They're going to build and they're going to develop more and more estrogen. So it's going to be a replicating cycle and a problem. And if it doesn't change early on, it's going to lead to complete estrogen dominance, complete imbalance, and it can literally shrink and stunt testicular development. Uh, it can activate breast development and really young girls. So many things when it's out of balance. You'll see how this works. So it's one big connected thing. There, it, there is, it is not an adult issue. It is a baby issue. It is an infant issue. It is a, so if you're fat with high estrogen, best course to lose weight for adults and kids. That is a huge starting point, yes. Like if, you're, if you have high estrogen and you're overweight, you need to work on losing weight. No matter how hard it is, you need to press in there and lose weight because losing the fat cells will, it will initially decrease estrogen very quickly. Yes, that is one step in the pathway. There are more steps to it, but that is one helpful step. And those kids, they need to be able to lose weight and get to a normal weight. It's not cute. It's not okay. It's, there's people that say it's bordering on child abuse at getting them to that, that, that weight when some of these kids are in a child obesity status, okay? Because it just creates so many, so many changes, all right? So let's talk about the causes of a lot of these things because Cushing's is an adrenal issue. That's an endocrine problem, all right? Thyroid, uh, thyroid problems in little kids. Like, little kids shouldn't be getting thyroid problems. Nobody should, but especially not in little kids, okay? So there's three main causes that I see uh, daily in the office that are um, contributing to the imbalance in these hormones and contributing, contributing to estrogen dominance in these kids. Uh, there's three different things, all right? Three things. Stress levels. As a society, creating so much increased stress and pressure, especially on our kids, that creates adrenal fatigue, creates um, uh, sympathetic dominance, creates right brain activity, and that all of that, all of that neurological imbalance will increase and fire estrogen. Because remember, we've talked about this in the past, and if you don't remember this, go back to YouTube and look at some of my scopes, some of my videos on brain balancing and neurology. Um, on, on, the, um, on the neurological side, the more you increase sympathetic or right brain firing, there are more receptors on that side of the brain for estrogen. Increase right brain, increase estrogen, Increase weight, increase more estrogen, wreak havoc on all hormones. You know what I'm saying? So it needs to stay in balance. Diet is a huge factor, okay? Diet is a huge, huge factor. Um, Don, ask me that in a minute. That's a really great question, okay? Diet is a huge factor because diet is this like replicating issue and the dietary things that our kids are hit with today are mind boggling. Um, and the toxicity levels and the amount of poison that are in food that we are all okay with is just stupid. Like, it's just crazy. Sorry for the kids are on here, and I said the S word. But it is completely crazy. The amount of poisons that are in the food that we are okay with our kids eating. Like, it's just, it just blows my mind. Hey, spell out RBST, and I'll tell you, well, it'll be, um, what, you, what you mean by that. Yes, diet is so, it's such a huge thing. So stop acting like the Skittles and the Starburst and the Sweet Tarts are not a big deal. They are a big deal, okay? It's a really big deal. Stop acting like the, you know, the McDonald's and the different processed foods are not a big deal and it's cute that they like white powder donuts. It's not cute, okay? It's not cute. It's literally dangerous to them, okay? It's not cute. It's not funny. Um, you know, like I know like right now, like, you know, with uh, grandparents and stuff like that, like dealing with like trying to educate them on like, hey, they don't need to eat candy. We don't want them to have all this junk. Well, they're, well we just want to give them sweet stuff. We want to love on them. You know what? Love on them with something healthy. Why don't you pass them down the legacy of health? Why don't you pass down for them the legacy of hormone balance and proper sexual uh, desire and proper sexual development and proper endocrine system function and proper digestive support? Oh, yeah, the bovine hormone. Yes, that is one big thing. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I thought you were giving me an acronym. Yeah, the hormone stuff and meats and stuff. Yeah, like the meats that you eat that aren't like organic and grass-fed. The hormones that are in them are a big deal because the hormones will get in and they build. Hormones in diet and hormones in exposure in society, like in your life, like with toxicity, okay, uh, with toxicity, don't just cycle out of the body because the different body tissues soak them up and they hold on to them. So it's really hard for their little bodies to get rid of all this extra estrogen or things like that, okay? Um, there's a lot of different types of meat that are totally fine. You just want to get non-hormone. You don't want them to have been treated with hormones. That's important, okay? Because if they treated the, the um, cow or the goat or the, the pigs or whatever you're feeding them, whatever kind of meat, 
the chickens, the turkey, if they fed them hormones in order to beef them up and make them bigger, that, that meat will transfer the hormones to your kids. You are taking the hormones in, okay? Yeah, you can go look up all this stuff <coughs> on Netflix. There's a ton of stuff on this, okay? What about extra, extra, extra testosterone in your 15-year-old son? Well, Michelle, he works out so much and he's taking so much protein and everything, he's, uh, he's driving it like crazy, all right? Um, you know, the flip side of that, of having not enough estrogen, let's say, and too much testosterone at that age is a possible issue with rage, possible issue with fertility, because, I mean, it, it can um, create a problem with fertility later on if the testosterone gets too much. Um, so there's things like that, like uh, headache issues, circulation problems. Um, you know, one of the things that may be a big deal, like we may need to do the saliva testing and look at it, but, well, we looked at the other, but I mean, like, you know, that may be something other people need to do is look at that saliva, but when it's that high, those are things that can come up. Uh, so are hormones being passed on to him? If he's eating them, he's getting them. Yes. If he's eating hormones and meat, he's getting hormones in his body. Absolutely. Um, breast, breast production in boys is too much estrogen. Yes. Breast production in boys is too much estrogen. They should not have breast tissue. Pecs, yes. Like, you know, but not breast tissue. That's estrogen issues. Estrogen. So when does this start? Let's talk about this and let's use our example at the beginning of the mom with the two-year-old that came in here to your little girl. Uh, and we're going to talk about teens as we go on everybody. So keep asking questions. It's great. Yeah, soy is estrogen. Okay, so soy is an estrogen. There's tons of stuff. I'm going to talk about xenoestrogens and things like that. All right. So when does this start? When does all of this really kickstart? When do we need to start being aware of this? Okay. It starts before birth. This starts during your pregnancy, okay? Mom's pregnancy is huge. It's a huge factor for setting up her receptors and her, her hormone balance to be able to pass on proper hormone balance to her kids, okay? Uh, yes, you can get um, uh, the breast production in guys to go away without surgery some of the times. It depends. It depends. Um, daily exposure to toxins in childhood, okay? Daily exposure to toxins in a diet during childhood. Those are the two starting points, okay? Do people take hormonal birth control during pregnancy? No. They shouldn't because they're pregnant because that would drive up and it would increase the risk of uh, miscarriage. Um, but let's talk about that. Like even before pregnancy, if you've had to be on Let's break that back. If you have gone on, you've never had to be on birth control. Let's just be real. I was trying to be nice about it, but that's a lie. You've never had to be on birth control. If you chose to be on birth control and you chose to take a synthetic um, chemical that has estrogen in it, okay, um, birth control drives estrogen into your system. Uh, birth control um, literally increases estrogen to the point to where even if you do get pregnant, the pre the the, um, the um, fertilized egg just can't implant because you're literally like sloughing it off over and over and over. So you drive estrogen through the roof and it will start you on an estrogen dominant pathway. Okay. It's dangerous. You got to really watch out for that. That's why on the package it says you, if you're on birth control and you're a girl that's around the age of late twenties, early thirties, you have a higher increased risk of stroke. That's not normal. That is not normal. Okay. It's crazy. So uh, starting off with the, with birth control, but when you're in, in pregnancy, Okay, and pregnancy starts. If you are eating, okay, here's one thing that I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this, okay? I'm gonna grab this mic, you ready? Okay, um, if you have seen a birth professional, that's what I'm gonna say, because it's not OBs only, I've heard midwives say this. If you have seen a birth professional uh, as an adult, well, obviously, because you're pregnant, hopefully you're an adult, and you go in, and part of their dietary recommendations are just to eat whatever you want because calories are calories. This is what I've heard multiple times. Don't worry, honey. You're pregnant. You're processing for two. You eat that extra ice cream. You eat those donuts. It's fine. Calories are calories. That, fire them. That is exactly right, Alexi. That is a lie. That is the most dangerous lie they could tell you because there's a couple of different things happening. Calories are not calories. That is completely ridiculous and scary and dangerous. They might as well shoot you. That is not okay. Um, calories are not calories. Getting calories from things that have um, tons of artificial sugars in it and artificial sweeteners uh, in the foods will increase estrogen in your system even when you are pregnant, okay? Uh, increase, yeah, just start today. Just start today. Like you start when you're, again, there is no condemnation on this. It is just I want you to wake up and be exposed to this 
I want you to understand it so that we can do better. <clears throat> so that you can expose other moms to this. So you can be like, hey, you know what? Put that donut down. That jelly, jelly-filled donut is not okay. So when you're eating things that are not healthy, you can increase estrogen. Extra estrogen can transmit through the placenta and you can transmit extra estrogen to the baby while you're pregnant. Same difference is while you're pregnant, if you're going through massive stress, major stress issues, horrific, traumatic stress that you can't handle, it's one thing. If it's stuff that you're putting yourself in and you're forcing yourself through stressful situations, that's different. Increased stress, increased cortisol will create a high cortisol level and the baby can create high stress levels in the baby. The baby can be born with adrenal fatigue. Off the bat, like right away. So a lot of these like babies that won't sleep, that are just amped up, they're like crying all the time and don't know what to do with society and they can't adapt, their adrenal glands are fried right off the bat because of your adrenal glands being fried. There was nothing for the baby to actually utilize, nothing for the baby to grow on, nothing for the baby to adapt to, okay? Um, so is this why baby got breast in a period of two weeks? It was two months, not two weeks old, two months old, okay? Two months old. But if baby did, then yeah, but two months old, here's the two problems, right? Um, the two month old, your baby did? Oh man, maybe, yes. Yeah, the extra estrogen that you detoxed out could have been part of it, yes. I told him, I thought you meant the other one. Dang, you need, to, you need to message me. Alexi, you need to message me about that. Gosh, girl, uh, all the stuff that you get on stuff, you need to message me. So on the two month old girl that I talked about, um, with her situation, the mom was very estrogen dominant when she got pregnant with her. She ate junk the entire pregnancy. She was on medication during uh, pregnancy. Um, they shouldn't, Jody, but yes, I've seen this happen. We've had this in the office. Uh, watch the replay and I'll explain it to you. I'd say it at the beginning. Um, the mom had um, major stress. Their marriage wasn't healthy. There was all of these things that were creating so much estrogen dominance in the mom. Little girl was born. She had um, hormone imbalance right off the start. Okay, right off the start, okay? Uh, two-year-old, uh, that's right, it was two-year-old that came in, not two months. Two-year-old, sorry, I'm like, keep saying two-year-old. It was uh, two months, it was two-year-old. Uh, because the average, let's keep our focus on the normal, average is 13. You should be 13 years old. The new amount of girls coming in that's really high at less than 10, like six, seven years old is really high. The youngest we've seen was two years old. Sorry, not too much. She was talking about her baby. Two years old. Um, birth control during nursing. Yes, that's crazy. Don't do that. Okay. So all these things, she ended up starting her cycle at two years old. Okay. Insane, like a horrible problem. All right. So here's the pregnancy connection. Okay. Here's the pregnancy connection. Like we just said, mom's stress levels. Okay. Mom's stress levels. You're increasing the stress levels in the baby through the placenta, the placenta. Okay. Yes. Natural family planning is fantastic. Save someone's life and get on that. Um, what you eat matters. So the toxic uh, buildup that happens from the mom and into the baby, what you eat matters. And these right here, this estrogen dominance that happens from the different food can be transported to the baby. Okay? Now, what can we do? What can we do? All right? There's things we could do. Hey, look. Look, if you don't know, that's called ignorance and you had no idea. Okay, look, you didn't knowingly do these things. So it's not too late to change your health and to help your girls and everything else. This is not for you to feel bad. And if you're feeling condemned, that is not the, that is not the father on that, okay? Like I, while nursing, not pregnant, oh, not nursing either. That is not okay. So yeah, work on it now and you do the best you can now and there's grace and there's things that you can work through and it's totally fine, okay? Um, if a teen didn't start until 15, teen girl or teen boy? Let me know on that. Uh, two will affect your hormones, absolutely. All right, so what can we do? There's a couple things that you can do, okay? One, be intentional about the diet and talk to exposure your kids get. Be very intentional about regulating and making sure that your kids don't get all these toxins in their diet and toxins in their environment. So you wanna decrease sugar. Um, teen girl, uh, it's not as big a deal on teen girls. That's okay, Lori, like 15. I want them to start later rather than sooner. On a boy, that would be not as good, okay? Decrease sugar, no artificial sweeteners, okay? Tap water, you gotta watch out for different hormones in tap water, that's exactly right. Lexi, <clears throat> you wanna look at um, you wanna look at this, watch this. This is a huge one that you guys need to look at. This right here would change a ton of lives. Picky with food, well, 
You don't buy the food they like and they're going to end up eating or they're going to starve. It depends on how old they are, honestly, Amber. Like, depending on the age, um, you know, just negotiating out with them and really educating them. Like, I'm more, I'm way more on the side of, like, just really teaching them why. Like, this is why and really working backwards, apologizing that we didn't give them things early on and working back and give them the things they really need. I'm, I'm more for that. All right, so xenoestrogens. Getting rid of, a Z, of xenoestrogens. These are chemical estrogen compounds that are found in things like cleaners, um, pesticides, makeups, perfumes, uh, these things, okay, these type of things, these toxic overloads, all of these have chemical estrogen compounds that are called xenoestrogens, okay? So with xenoestrogens, these can fire estrogen pathways exactly like regular estrogen, but they are a chemical. They're synthetic, okay? And so they fire it too much. They're not regulated naturally by the brain because normal estrogen is regulated by the brain. A xenoestrogen, like with pesticides or things you spray your lawn with, like here's two big things that you could change right now that would change the hormonal history and the hormonal future more for your kids forever. Get rid of the toxic cleaners inside your house and stop treating your lawns with all these pesticides and stop treating, doing, using pest control, uh, pesticides or lawn care and stop using pesticides inside the house that have tons of chemicals. There are other things there are other things that are toxin free that you can look at that I can't talk about that you can look and find that are fantastic and you will not get the toxic exposure. Okay, that's huge. All right. The third thing that we can do for kids and stuff like that is learn to handle our emotions. Oh my gosh. Like this is why uh, Vanessa Stegner and I and Cindy and I um, and our team, this is why we're so huge on emotional balancing and working with your emotions and supporting them. Learn to handle your stress because stress affects the kids even if you don't know it. Stress affects the kids so much. Um, also test kids, uh, teach, teach kids to process. Like teaching kids early on that it's okay to have emotions, okay? Like yes, AK, you can be skinny and estrogen dominant, absolutely. It doesn't only mean if you're overweight that you're estrogen dominant. I have just as much, uh, just as many women now, the new estrogen dominance, the new PCOS or endometriosis is a real thin skinny girl that has a hard time, a uh, hard time building muscle tone um, and she'll have estrogen dominance. That happens too. But those, those women build up estrogen on the inside. So they'll have a lot of cyst formations and stuff like that. All right. So that's a lot of stuff in kids. Okay. What did you think about the... It put on the three-year birth control. I am against birth control, period. Like, I'm not for it. Um, there's a lot of reasons. I'll do a whole scope on birth control, uh, and I'll, um, I'll explain why I'm not for, and we don't agree with birth control, and we've never used birth control ever <clears throat> because we just don't agree with it um, at all on any level. Uh, and so medically, physiologically, spiritually, any of that, I don't, I don't agree with it. So um, I'll do that for you, um, but then it is up to you. I can't tell you what to do on that. It is, it is all you. <clears throat> Doing birth control to help your face be cleared up is crazy. Um, you know, it's uh, all that. But anyways, we'll, we'll talk about this. Okay, Melissa, good question. Are hormone issues hereditary? Okay, so remember the mom we just talked about the fact that she had estrogen dominance? Okay, now, are hormone issues hereditary? Yes and no. Hormone imbalance possibilities can be passed down from the mom or the grandma or something like that or the dad because they had an issue and that organ wasn't working well because they didn't take care of their body. And they can pass down the tendency to have hormone imbalance. Just because, that's exactly right, Marie, epigenetics, just because a mom or the dad or the grandma or the grandpa, grandpa had hormone imbalance does not mean that you will have it just because they genetically, that's what happened. Because so much of hormone imbalance, I would, I would venture out to say 90% plus hormone imbalance is environmental. It's either what you're getting exposed to or what you're taking in. Okay, so um, it's only really hereditary in the sense of what the parents will pass down because of things that they've suffered with and punished themselves with. What kind of tests can we request from our doctor to determine our hormone imbalance? Uh, Trishy, the, the ones that I like the best on hormone imbalance, I recommend saliva testing. It's more accurate. Uh, you could do blood analysis testing. Uh, it's not quite as accurate uh, for a functional um, hormone balance test. We, use a, we do um, saliva testing in the office, and we use a company called Diagnostex, and we do that all the time, uh, and that's really good. Um, and so I recommend that if you're going to do it, okay? Um, as I said, Jim, how do him and his wife prevent, uh, how do, how do we prevent, um, natural family planning? Like, like we use more natural family planning and uh, Creighton method, 
Um, and those are the two. And I'll talk about that on the on the birth control scope because that's a really, really great one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's talk about teens real quick because teenagers are a little bit different animal uh, because they've had imbalance for longer and now they're turning into adults. Like they're reproducing fertile adults. Okay. And so this is something you got to look at. Things for teens to help and lifestyle to help them uh, balance out their hormones and really feed them as far as lifestyle type things. And then we're going to talk about more support later on. Supplements and things to do to help them. Um, for teens, uh, you want to do several things right off the bat. Um, you can uh, message me on Facebook, uh, Don. Um, if there's stuff I need to help you with your stuff, I'll totally do a phone consult with you. And that's normally a lot more thorough. Okay. All right. So increase physical activity. Um, with the boys, here's the problem with boys. Um, with the estrogen dominance that's happening and the xenoestrogens and things they get exposed to, boys, right? Watch this. With boys, okay, um, they need testosterone in order to activate, um, in order to activate um, their hormone pathway. Okay. So with boys, if they're getting an excess in estrogen in their system because of environment or because of diet. Then what ends up happening is estrogen and testosterone are opposite hormones, okay? Like if one fires, the other one goes down, right? So if you're firing so much estrogen, their testosterone will go down, okay? Will go down. And so as the testosterone tanks and goes down, then it will slow or can stall or can stunt their sexual development and their hormones, okay? So Jennifer, getting more testosterone is things like physical activity, like having them do more physical movement and more activity, uh, taking more testosterone, more testosterone, more, more uh, protein, okay? If they eat more protein, it helps to balance out blood sugar, regulate their blood sugar so they're not getting too much and it's not creating so much of a cortisol spike in their adrenal glands and it will help to regulate more of their testosterone, okay? Regulate screen time because if you're not doing as much screen time, this is a huge issue nowadays. Um, screen time and computer screens and everything are stressful on the endocrine system. They're stressful on the brain. If you increase stress, if you increase stress, you increase estrogen. Uh, breast production in men is estrogen dominance or testosterone deficiency. It creates the same problem, but it could be from either one. You could either have a deficiency in one or a, or a toxicity in the other, okay? Uh, is a 20 minute burst type workout enough four to six days a week for teen boys? Yeah, 20 to 30 minutes is good on four to six days a week. Yeah, that's really good. Have them do some different like actual like weighted exercise once they're that age. Like light weights, but doing stuff, but doing the body weight exercise and stuff is good. Uh, and that works really well. Wrestling, like them wrestling is good. Like actually doing some physical things in order to do. Okay. Um, all right. I'm not into doing the um, testosterone like uh, suppositories replacements. I don't. I don't like that because if you're if you're artificially driving a pathway the wrong way, uh, then you're going to create imbalance later on. Okay. Then I create imbalance later on. Okay. Now for urological disorders, I refer out to a urologist. I have a urologist that I work with um, who is awesome. No, I'm not into steroids, Dave. Um, <laughs> steroids are awesome. You're not smart. Well. I don't even want to say what that makes you sound like on there. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, we're talking about uh, kids and teens and hormone imbalance. So, like, that's ridiculous. Um, all right. So, here. Uh, all right. Increase physical activity. Um, uh, release, uh, reduce screen time. Okay. Uh, increase protein. We talked about this. Um, decrease sugar. Ah, sugar and artificial sweeteners is probably dietarily the biggest issue. These, uh, like the monsters, um, you know, energy drinks and stuff like that, um, and all of those things, um, those will drive up so much sugar in their system that it creates more, right? It creates more um, cortisol release, okay? It creates more cortisol release. And when the cortisol goes up, it ends, it ends up driving estrogen through the roof. And you're going to create that imbalance. You're going to create the accelerated sexual development in girls. And you're, cre you're going to create a depressed, okay, a depressed um, sexual development of boys. And it totally throws it off, okay? So we're going to do another scope, and I'm going to talk about things uh, to balance it out, okay? You're welcome. You're welcome, Melissa, so much. Um, teen boys and high sexual attraction. Well, there's two things. One, oh, here's something that'll happen with that. If their estrogen has been high when they're really young, okay, 
And as they get older and the estrogen switches and they switch to testosterone really quickly, sometimes it drives their brain really hard and they get such a testosterone surge that it will drive up sexual desire too high and they get too much, right? So if they've been too much estrogen dominant one side and all of a sudden they're starting to go into puberty, then it'll really switch too hard. Sometimes that can happen. Uh, other times if they're working out too much or they're taking on too much protein that are getting too much testosterone in their system, it can drive them too far that way, okay? Um, in hormonal acne, in girls it's excess, uh, it's excess um, estrogen. Uh, in boys, it's excess testosterone half the time. So it can be too much of either of the hormones that they need. It can make the hormone uh, be detoxed through the skin and they'll get acne. But it also aggravates their gut. And so a lot of acne is gut inflammation, so you got to look at that too. Okay? Was this helpful? I hope this was helpful to you guys just as a starting point because I want to expose you to what's going on. It's a little bit longer than what I normal go, uh, normally go, but I want you guys to get how intensely important this is. Uh, how intensely... Um, vital this is uh, in order to make sure you're giving them the best start possible, okay? Um, so I'm not going to help you with the steroid, dude, because I don't recommend steroids at all. So you might look at, but you might look at probiotics and aloe vera juice to really support your digestive system, okay? Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and log off. I'm going to let you guys go. You guys are fantastic. Um, thank you for getting on. We're going to do support later on. Uh, we'll talk about support, how to support their hormones. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, how to make sure that those organs are getting supported um, the way that they need to. Um, I was going to leave the guy on. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to block him. I'm just thinking like, like stupid stuff. So anyways, um, so I'm going to get back on do another scope. Look on YouTube. I'll post this one tomorrow night or so. And so that way we can, uh, you can go back and look at it and share it. Uh, but I just appreciate you guys for digging in and wanting to go further with your kids. Like we need to do this for our children. The next generation needs us to do better. Okay. So I'm proud of you guys. Remember health is simple, but it's not easy. So learn more, do better. And let's make that next generation better than we've ever thought of being. Take care. I love you guys.